and a very loud processing theme. Well, these players will roll, and it looks like Finkel has won the roll, so I believe he'll be on the play now. For Jonathan Lloyd, you are playing against the best player in Magic history with the potential of a 3-0 on the line. That's not easy to do, but if he's able to get by this, it'll actually be Jonathan Lloyd who might be the story of this particular draft pod walking out of here at 3-0 and and in top eight contention. And uh, Lloyd's deck's a little bit different from the red-black decks that uh, I typically have. He's basically a red-black removal deck. Would not surprise me if he takes the draw in this matchup. Uh, a card he has in his deck that is all sorts of problems for Finkel's list is Radiant Flames. Sure. Finkel is trying to get on the board with a lot of fragile creatures, and uh, if, if he's not conscious of Radiant Flames, that could be a, worth, a game win on its own for Lloyd. On top of that, he's got Rolling Thunder and Serpentine Strike. These are all high-quality bombs against Finkel's deck, who's trying to get on the board with a lot of fragile flyers. Now, here's one thing that's interesting. You remember pack three from the draft that we watched from John's side of things. John opened that Serpentine Strike, so when he is playing those games, he might be cognizant of the fact that, hey, I opened that card. Perhaps I should be playing around that card, and perhaps Jonathan Lloyd is the one who has that card. That will be on his radar. Yeah. I'm sure Finkel is aware of all the significant cards he passed, but... If I recall correctly, he did not see the Rolling Thunder or the Radiant Flames. That's There's a, a lot to play around here. Uh, there is a light white splash in the deck. It, it appears that he's just playing white, Lloyd is, to be able to uh, get Radiant Flames for three. He's playing a Shambling Vent and some White Lands. Well, he's taking a look at six cards right now with Jonathan Lloyd. We'll see if he's happy with what he's looking at. Looks a little unsure of himself. Can't forget that when you do take a mulligan, you get that Vancouver scry. Sounds like you didn't mulligan at all. What I've seen in uh, the month or so I've been covering tournaments with this rule, people are way more likely to mulligan seven, but way more likely to keep six. Yes. That, that's how this works. When you have a bad seven card hand, you say, got a scry. When you have a bad six card hand, you say, well, I've got a scry. Well, we are underway here. Lloyd will start off with a Swamp. His round number 12 here from Grand Prix Atlanta has begun. Lloyd will draw that card. It looks like it's a copy of Evolving Wild. So that'll be land number two. Pass the turn back over to Finkel. Finkel with an island as the draw. He'll play an island, pass the turn back. Lloyd will sacrifice the Evolving Wilds. We'll see what land he wants to search up here. Looks like he's going to go with a mountain. High pressure match here for Lloyd. You have to imagine. I mean, this is something for John Finkel. He's comfortable in the feature match area. He's been there for most of his life playing Magic. For Jonathan Lloyd, the direct opposite. He's a new face here in this situation playing against the game's best. He does have a planes for land number three, and he actually does have Radiant Flames in hand right now. And he'll just pass the turn back. Wasteland Strangler, the draw here for Finkel. He'll play an island, pass the turn back. Unclear if John has any black mana at this point. Lloyd will miss a land drop. Finkel will take a draw. Finkel with land number four. He does have black mana. There's a Cloud Manta. Over to Lloyd we go. Mountain's the draw, so he's found his fourth land. He'll play that. And it'll be curious to see how he goes about using the Radiant Flames. Finkel didn't see it in the draft, as you mentioned. Here comes an attack for three. Lloyd will fall down to 17. There's a Coral Helm guide. Now we're going to head back Lloyd's way. Blighted Fen is the land. The spell is a Kozilek's Channeler. And a Spell Shrivel, which has been so impressive for John all the, all the way throughout this draft. Good yet again. Though I believe that's the only counter spell he has in his deck. So now Radiant Flames is going to resolve if it shows up. The question is, how much is Finkel willing to put onto the battlefield here? Well, we found our answer. Now, Silent Skimmer actually does live through Radiant Flames. Yeah, this is a nice way for Finkel to advance his board. I don't know if Radiant Flames is necessarily on his radar, but at least he'll be left with one threat that doesn't die. You know, Lloyd's hoping he can get everything with the Radiant Flames. Well, at 12, facing seven points of damage, unless Lloyd has a great play this turn, you, you think he's got to pull the trigger. Well, there's Shatter Skull Menace, and that's kind of a great play. It doesn't stop the Flyers, of course but it does kind of cold that ground creature for right now. Lloyd willing to fall to five here. Potentially. If Finkel, if Finkel adds more to the, the... 
he's he's risking falling to five on board. If Finkel happens to add another three toughness or more fragile creature to the board this turn, Lloyd's really paid off. If Finkel simply attacks here, doesn't really play anything, that's a problem for Lloyd. He's taking a bit of a risk here trying to get everything. What do we have here? Well, he's not going to get that. Coastal Discovery is going to awaken an island. That's a 4-4 four, four as well. Finkel gets to draw two cards, and now it really begs the question, how good is this Radiant Flames going to be, and should it have been cast earlier? Uh, well, uh, it depends on what else Lloyd's hand really offered here. Sure. Uh, he might felt like he was behind enough and didn't have enough going on that he really needed to catch all of Finkel's hand. That play right there is about the worst case scenario where Finkel gets to add a four power or four toughness, excuse me, creature to the board. Also draw some cards so he can reload after the sweeper. So now here's a little game inside the game is do you even cast Radiant Flames? Uh, it's not like Lloyd is, is beat on the board. He can trade his 4-4 with the land. And if he has an answer to the Silent Skimmer, it, it, at least on the table, he's playing on. Okay. Well, he will cast Radiant Flames. It'll be for two. He'll take care of two of the creatures. You mentioned that the Shatter Skull Recruit can take care of the 4-4 island that has been awoken. And now if he does have an answer to the Silent Skimmer, he is playing on. So we'll find out if he does have an answer. He's got quite a few cards in his hand, as Finkel will untap. Finkel, no shortage of cards on his end since he did just resolve a Colsa Discovery, and he's taking a draw step. Johnny Magic is going to start with a Transgress the Mind, a card I have been very impressed with all weekend long. Getting that information is key, and what you'll find over there, there are some very large Eldrazi over there in Jonathan Lloyd's hand. It looks like two copies of Rune Processor. On top of an Alter's Reap? I believe a Deathless Behemoth. No. So you mentioned that this, this particular red-black deck, it doesn't have that aggressive slant. It's actually got more of a controlling one. Definitely. This feels like a draw first style red black deck where yep. you're just trying to make your land drops, kill everything that enters the table, and eventually win with the leftovers. I think I'm going to consult the grip before making a selection with Transgress the Mind. Pretty important decision here for John as he's on the front foot and would not like Jonathan Lloyd to be able to catch up. Or as you did mention, there are some effects in here that Finkel did not see in the draft. The Radiant Flames was one. The Rolling Thunder was another. Finkel going to take care of the Deathless Behemoth. Here comes the Skimmer and the Island. Looks like some resources will be traded here. Perhaps Finkel's hoping that Lloyd doesn't draw any lands. Now we are going to go Jonathan Lloyd's way. Finkel with no follow-up. It looks like he's a little bottlenecked on mana at this point. And, and Finkel trying to squeeze Lloyd a little bit. Right now, Lloyd can answer the Silent Skimmer with the Blighted Fen he has in play. But then he's down a land. He's lost his six drop, so his hand now is just all sevens. And Finkel has a lot of time to add to the board before Lloyd can produce anything threatening. Well, the Blighted Fen did get activated. Finkel draws a card for the turn. So draws his Sky Spawner. And he will deploy that. Sion will join the battlefield. No surprise to be able to see him reload here. There's also a culling drone. Over to Lloyd, who's on five lands and needs to get to seven for a rune processor, which would be very helpful right now. Because he's facing lethal on the table and he's got no spells that he can cast, so he will just concede the game. John Finkel is going to win game number one here over Jonathan Lloyd. That beautiful blue black deck that Finkel has drafted is up a game yet again. Lloyd here playing with 18 lands, and I think that might be short. Thinking maybe 19? I think so. I mean, he's got two copies of Rune Processor, a Deathless Behemoth. He does have Kozlex Chandler to make a little bit of extra mana, but the top end of his, of his deck is where the real power comes in. Cards like Serpentine Spike and Rolling Thunder. So he's got some pretty powerful hedges against flooding out, including the Blighted Fen that we saw that game as well. Um, at, at the minimum, I think that Lloyd needs to choose to take the draw. I don't think this deck can afford to be 18 lands and be on the play. We'll, we'll see how he decides to go. I don't know who won the roll there in game number one. I don't know if that was John's choice or Lloyd's choice to take the play. But if he's going to stay on 18 lands, I think Lloyd needs to take the draw. 
This will be interesting, right? Because there were definitely some mana issues there for both players. John was able to work them, his way out of them, but also John's the more aggressive of the two players as well. So John doesn't need as many lands to operate. For Lloyd, it's really just kind of a demonstration of I need more lands to be able to do my thing. A rune processor maybe turns that entire game around. And uh, Finkel drew what I believe to be one of his most important cards in this matchup, which is the Coastal Discovery. Yeah. Against decks that are trying to beat you with a lot of removal spells, divination style effects are very good. If the game drags out, Coastal Discovery is quite a bit better than that. Now, one thing I know that you oftentimes like to say, and I don't want to speak for you, but I know that when you're playing competitive Magic, you, you try to take it just one game at a time, one match at a time. It's kind of all the same. For Jonathan Lloyd right now, he's working his way towards a 3-0, but in order to get that, he's got to win his next two games against the best player in Magic history. You're 10-1 you're and one in a Grand Prix. Great spot to be in. You're looking at 3-0-ing your first pod after X-1-ing the sealed portion. you got to feel like pretty good about your position right now, but... These Grand Prix slip away from you so fast yeah. because the records required for a top eight performance for a Pro Tour invite is 13 and two. That's really hard to do even if you're playing well and doing well and running well throughout the entire tournament. And now you're playing against Finkel, the best of all time. And you, you did take a mulligan that game, but you drew Radiant Flames, one of your best cards in the matchup. And the game still wasn't all that close because you drew too much of your top end. Yeah. Lloyd's going to take the draw. Okay. You had a feeling he would do this, given his deck. Yes. Radiant Flames does a nice job of being on the draw and catching you up and buying you more time as well. And Lloyd's just got a lot of removal. He can, he can hang around for a while with most of his draws. Now, what will be curious here, now that Finkel has, saw, has seen excuse me, Radiant Flames, will he try to play around it? I think he kind of incidentally played around at that particular game by playing the skimmer, and that kind of blows up the big plan. Radiant Flames can only deal three. He would have liked to just clean up everything and catch up that way but I'm curious to see if Finkel will try to play around Radiant Flames this well, game. Well, he can do a little bit of work in the sideboards as well. It's not just what's going on inside the game. If he's got mediocre, fragile creatures, he has things like, for I, I don't know if he's actually going to go down this far exactly, but you have something like Callistra Nightwatch he can bring in. Mm -hmm. That's a threat that it's about as good as some of the other cards in his deck and also plays around Radiant Flames. You can't kill it that way. Culling Drone is the play here for Finkel, getting on the board early as Lloyd will sacrifice an evolving wilds and go get himself a Swamp. It's also a card that plays around Serpentine Spike, and it's pretty hard to kill with Rolling Thunder. So uh, if Finkel is aware of all these cards in Lloyd's deck, that's not a real big way of playing around it. It's not a huge sideboarding shift, but that's a card that might come in, just a little bit of extra toughness. Culling Drone gonna come across here for two. It'll also allow an ingest, turn on a small portion of John's deck. It'll hit a mountain, and now there's a Sky Spawner. So this is one of those spots where Radiant Flames will be just fine if Jonathan Lloyd does have it. Doesn't even need the third color of mana. Yeah. He'll just play a mountain and pass the turn back, though. Finkel with the Swamp. The draw for the turn was a Cloud Manta. Curious to see if he's willing to deploy that. For now, it'll just be an attack for five. Lloyd is going to go down to 13. There's an Ingest. And now there is the Manta. So, Radiant Flames, are you over there? Now is the time, Jonathan Lloyd. Uh, a well, mountain, and the answer is no. I think Finkel's instinct here is the board I presented on the third turn was pretty juicy for Radiant Flames. It's unlikely that Lloyd is slow rolling it at this point, so I should just put the cloud mana on the table. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight is the attack. Jonathan Lloyd's going to go down to five here, and Finkel is not willing. Well, we'll see if he wants to deploy anything just yet. He will there in Coral Helm Guide. I think he's got Spell Shrivel at the ready here. Lloyd will draw, and there is nothing doing here, and just that quickly... John Finkel, with that blue-black deck that we saw him draft at the beginning of the day, has gone 2-0 yet again. That's no games dropped, by the way, in the draft with this deck. And I would argue no games that were where he was really in, under any threat of ever losing. Yes. That was a, the, one of the more dominating 3-0s, 6-0s I can recall seeing. John Finkel, 3 0s the pod. He is at the top of the pod. He is very near the top of the standings. 11-1 here at Grand Prix Atlantic. Congratulations to him, making it look very, very easy. As